Um, now this is question number five. It says a dead body was found within a closed room of a house where the temperature was constant, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediately I know that that is going to be my room temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to write that down. So my TM is going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It says, at the time of discovery, the core temperature of the body was determined to be 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now note, it says, at the time of discovery. We do not know the time of discovery. So, but we're told that at the time of discovery, the core temperature of the body was determined to be 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, since we do not know the time of discovery, I'm going to represent my time of discovery with X. So, I'm going to say, let X, let X represent the time of discovery. So if x is the time of discovery, we are told that t of x, t of x equals 85 degrees, 85, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one hour later, a second measurement showed that the core temperature was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the one hour later is with reference to the time of discovery. So that implies that at t of x plus 1, the new temperature of the body was found to be 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're told that we said, we're given an assumption that assuming that the time of death corresponds to t equals 0 and that the core temperature at that time was 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that should tell you that that is going to be your initial condition. That is what our statement simply implies is that at time t equals zero, our temperature is ninety-eight point point six degrees Fahrenheit. Point six degrees Fahrenheit. Now we are told to determine how many hours elapsed before the body was found. The body was found when? But was found at the time of discovery so we are told to find x this is just what we are told to find now like i like i used to say i whenever you want to solve a question you first observe what kind of process is going on here now the processes that are going on here involves the loss of temperature and the gain of temperature one is losing one is one is losing and one is one is gaining stuff like that so the, the first thing you need to think or you want to think about is what differential equation actually models the behavior of the processes involved in this problem? What is it? Newton's law. It's Newton's law. So you see that the body of the temperature, the temperature of the body, starts from um, 98 and begins to decrease, to decrease. So we're using Newton's law of cooling. So that is what we're going to be using here. So the model, the model is. Newton's Newton's law of Newton's law Newton's law of cooling. So now, having known all this, let's now begin solving solving the the, the problem proper. Yeah. So let's push this up. Now, according to Newton's law of cooling, we have that the rate of change of temperature with time is proportional to the change or the difference in the temperature of the body with the environment, Tm. And from here, we have our Tm to be 70. So this is going to be K into T minus minus 70 so this is what we have as our k so now let's solve let us solve this differential equation first so what we have is we have the t the t the t equals k into t minus 70 so to solve this you could you we use a separable method like we've been doing so you have the t 
so we have the t divided by t and the 70 equals k dt and then we integrate we integrate both sides so bringing out here we have the lane the lane of t minus 70 equals kt plus c so this is going to give us t minus 70 equals b e to the power k e to the power kt and then finally we have c to be equal to 70 plus b e to the power k b to the power kt so now this is what we have and then we are told that at time t equals zero the temperature is 98.6 degrees fahrenheit so that is the temperature when um, the time is the time is zero so we're going to implement that here so we now have is 98.6 equals 70 plus b e to the power zero that's one so that implies that b equals 98.6 minus 70 and then when you subtract that you have your b to be equal to 28 28.c so now we now have our b so we now have our new t we have our t which is this so we have our t to be called to 70 plus 28.6 to the power k to the power kt now the next thing is let's we need to use these two these two conditions that we're giving us let me call this condition one and call this condition two so the first condition says when t is x our big t is 85 so when t is x big t is 85 which i'm going to write as this so we have 85 85 equals 70 plus 28 point six to the power k times now when t is small um small x and then the next condition says that it says when small t is x plus one big t is 80 so we're going to that now it says 80 corresponds to 70 plus 28.6 k into x plus 1 so that's going to be kx plus plus 1 kx plus k so now from here we have 85 85 minus uh, minus 70 so that's going to give us 28 so this implies that 28.6 to the power kx equals 85 minus 70 is 15 and then this is going to give us 28.6 so this is a um, laws of indices so we can just write this as 28.6 to the power kx times 28.6 28.6 to the power k now equals 80 minus 70 which is going to be 10 which is 10 anyway which is 10 so now how then do we solve do we solve this problem oh, oh, oh. I think there we must have made some little error here so we have b e to the power k t so this is this is going to be e there should be an e here there should be an e here sorry for that so this there should be an e here should be there should be an e here oh. so let's So we need to we need to clean this area here. So this is seventy plus twenty eight point six e to the power k t. So that's e to the power k e to the power k t. So this is twenty eight point six e. So there should be an e here also e to the power k x.
and then there should be an E here too. So that's 28.6 e to the power kx and this is 28.6 into e to the power kx times e to the power k. So this is what we have. So from here we have 28.6 e to the power kx equals 15. And then this gives us this is the same thing as 28.6 e to the power kx and then e to the power k equals 10. So since we have 28.6 e to the power kx equals 15 here, so instead of writing 28.6 e to the power kx, I'm going to rewrite it as 15. So you're writing that, what we have is 15 e to the power k equals 10. So to find e to the power k, so that will be 10 divided by 15. And that's going to give us approximately 0 0.667. 0 0.667. So to find k, we take the natural logarithm of both sides. So k equals the natural logarithm of 0. 667 and that is going to give us negative 0 0.4405 so that is what we have for our k now the next thing is how then do we find now since we have our value for k so we want to find x so from here we can find x so we have so i'm going to be using let me call this um 2.1 so using 2.1 we have 28.6 e to the power k now so our k is negative 0.405x equals 15 so to find x I need to divide both sides by 15 I mean both sides by 28.6 so you have e to the power negative 0. 405x equals 15 divided by um, 28.6 and that's going to give us 0 0.5244 15 divided by 28.6 which is 0 0.5244 so to find x we take the natural logarithm of both sides like we've been doing so you have negative 0. 405x equals the natural logarithm of 0 0.5244. So therefore, x equals the natural logarithm of 0 0.5244 divided by negative 0 0.405. So this is this is what we get for that part. And then when you simplify that. What we're going to have is 1.593, 1.593 hours. So x equals 1.593, 1.593 hours. So that is exactly what um, the problem actually told us to find. It says a dead body was found within this. Determine how many hours elapsed before the body was found. So this is...